Imagine a world where cats glow in the dark, bugs are spies, and people can clone each other. This world is potentially just a few years away. The technology is here, but the controversy over the ethics is holding these innovations back from becoming abundant around us. Presently, there are four main principles related to ethical decisions in science. First is the respect for autonomy, or listening to the choices of the people involved. Second, beneficence, or whether or not the benefits and the uses of the outcome outweigh the potential problems. Third is non-maleficence, which is associated with beneficence and deals with making sure that no harm is being done to anyone involved. Finally, justice in people's rights and federal laws must be taken into consideration. There is a controversy over gene therapy, which is the insertion of genes into an individual's cells to treat a disease. Genes are introduced into a cell's nucleus using a safe modified virus, which carries the new gene into the cell and injects it into the nucleus. Then the cell can start producing the correct proteins from the fully functional gene. This process is mostly studied for curing hereditary diseases of a DNA mutation, but there has been some work in cancer treatment research as well. Although it is all still under research, some promising experiments may be used soon in mainstream medicine practice. For example, one powerful gene therapy is being used in studies to effectively reverse heart failure. Advocates for the continuation of gene therapy research state that there is only one way of curing many genetic disorders, replacing the defective gene with a healthy copy. And therefore, gene therapy is the only hope of finding cures for such disorders. Also, once successful, gene therapy can have a number of advantages over drug therapy by providing these cures rather than just easing the symptoms and even wiping out some diseases completely. Opponents claim that the current lack of knowledge and understanding of the treatment means that its safety is unknown. With current knowledge, there is no guarantee that the virus carrying the healthy gene will end up in the specific place it is intended. There is a risk of causing even more damage to the genetic makeup that can result in severe consequences for the patient. The intrusive nature of gene therapy means that we can discover information about our genetic makeup that some would say we were never meant to know. There is also their moral argument that a person does not have the right to play God with a person's life. This is an ongoing discussion in the bioengineering field. It is absolutely inevitable that groups are going to try to clone a human being, but they are going to create a lot of dead and dying babies along the way, says bioethicist Thomas Murray. Cloning a person creates a new host of dilemmas for various religions and the concept of autonomy. Furthermore, letting a dead person walk the earth again challenges the idea of mortality, and some people aren't okay with that, especially because for a while, only the 1% will be able to afford getting cloned or the benefits of therapeutic cloning. A specific branch of cloning, known as therapeutic cloning, requires taking stem cells from an embryo and creating a clone so that the new entity can function as a compatible stem cell donor when the original person develops an incurable illness or something similar. Too bad harvesting stem cells from embryos is usually a deadly procedure for those embryos. And too bad standard nomenclature is such an emotionally callous word as harvesting, which only fuels passions in defense of human rights. Cloning an embryo several times and slowly manipulating the genes of each new embryo might give us the ability to build ideal genomes free of dispositions towards disease or disability. But what happens to all the embryos that are labeled failures? Birth to them anyway, even when we know for a fact that they will suffer some disadvantages? Or destroy them? Evidently, human-animal hybrids already exist. Most medical experiments rely on lab rats before they move to human trials. However, some people such as Ohio State Representative Andy Thompson feel that implanting human DNA into animal embryos crosses an ethical line that we've recognized for centuries, that we're mixing animal kind with human kind. So I guess he'd rather have a skip straight to human trials, or more likely, he'd prefer we just not do it at all. Another rising biotechnology project is the development of HIMEMS. HIMEMS stands for Hybrid Insect Microelectromechanical System, and DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, has been funding this research for many years now. The project is raising real insects filled with electronic circuitry, which can be guided using GPS technology to specific targets via electrical impulses sent to their muscles. Scientists have achieved this by developing tightly joined machine insect interfaces by placing micromechanical systems inside the insects during their early stages of metamorphosis. The insect's nerves then grow into the internal computer chip so that scientists can control their activities. Since a majority of the tissue development in insects occurs in the later stage, stages of metamorphosis, the renewed tissue growth around the microsystems will tend to heal and form a reliable and stable tissue-machine interface. 
In this picture, the insertion state is shown in section 1. A successfully developed microsystem controlled insect is shown in section 2, and the micros microsystem platform is being held with tweezers. The x-ray image in section A shows the probes inserted into the flight muscles. Such bugs could carry one or more sensors, such as a microphone or a gas sensor, to relay back information gathered from a target destination. One realistic application of these bugs is using cyborg moths or other insects to carry sensors that relay information that can be used during search and rescue missions or surveillance missions. This technology is very impressive, but where is the line drawn? Should we be allowed to take away the autonomy of a living organism and control them at our will? And if these bugs can be controlled and used for surveillance, how will citizens protect their privacy? If this technology does get approved, it would definitely come with much backlash from animal rights societies and also the general public. Scientists are continually pushing the boundaries of bioengineering. By manipulating genetics, researchers are able to shed light on diseases and other problems that plague society. In recent years, for example, scientists have created glow-in-the-dark animals. These animals are created by inserting proteins from a luminescent jellyfish. The proteins have been inserted into cats, monkeys, sheep, and fish. The animals are not harmed by the inserted proteins, and they don't experience any side effects aside from the actual glowing. These alterations are done to research genetic diseases and create more affordable medicines. Another modern use of bioengineering is called xenotransplantation. Xenotransplantation is the process of transplanting cells, tissues, or even organs from animals to humans. The most commonly used animal in this process is the pig. To ensure that the human recipient's body does not reject the organ or tissue, the pig is genetically modified by injecting human DNA while it is still in the embryonic stage of development. Advantages of the procedure include the unlimited supply of organs, a substantially reduced waiting list for patients waiting for organs, the organs can be acquired as soon as they are needed, avoiding the effects of death on the tissue, and the guarantee of infection-free donors. On the other hand, there are many humanitarian concerns with the process because the animals must be put down after the organs are removed. This process is also used for medical research. For example, the transplantation of pancreatic islets can also treat diseases such as Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, and even lessen the effects of strokes. Bioengineering has made great strides in the past few decades, but its merits have been hotly contested. Both the supporters and the opponents are very passionate about, about their respective viewpoints. Bioengineering is a very broad field of study, and many aspects of it concern ethical controversies, mainly because of the field's intrusive nature in living organisms. A central question over the debate is, are we allowed to play God and mess with the way organisms came to be? In addition, we cannot always be sure of the outcomes while experimenting. How can we be allowed to do something potentially painful, damaging, or even something that could kill an organism? We are not only messing with individuals, but also we could be messing with forces that we do not know about yet. So the real question is, how far do we go? Is an ideal world something to strive for, even if some individuals are harmed on the way? Or should we just be happy to live in the world that we have been given?